So now we're going to start to talk a little bit about flip-flops and latches. So flip-flops and latches represent sequential logic, okay? And so they're a separate group. Previously, we've been talking about combinational logic gates where you had inputs and outputs. But now sequential logic and the flip-flops and latches begin to represent memory elements. We also use them with clocked inputs to um, create triggering events. So this is a D flip-flop and it's a schematic diagram of a D flip-flop. So you have the one input D and you have the two outputs Q and not Q. So Q is the output, not Q is just the opposite of Q and the symbol with the triangle is the clock and that's where you're literally going to run a clocked input with a particular frequency in and the clock always has this triangular shape on it. So now let's look at the table here that explains what happens. So when D is zero, right, this arrow means that when the edge of a clock comes by, it's going to look and see what D is and then it will make Q that. So when the rising edge of a clock comes by, it'll look at D. If D is zero, it'll make Q zero. If D is one, it will make Q one. Okay, so Q follows D. All right, and then not Q is just the opposite of that. And this symbol, this up arrow means rising edge of the clock. All right, so this would be a timing example. All right, and so if we look at the clock, here is a rising edge, here's a falling edge, here's the next rising edge. Okay, so that D flip-flop only looks at D when this rising edge comes by. So it's going to do it here, and here, and here, and so on. Alright, so let's look at what that looks like. Here we have the clock, and it's going to look at D, and it's going to adjust Q. So at the first place where there's a clock, you see that it looks at D, D is 1, so it changes Q to 1. Okay, so we come here, all right, and as we move along, D, and D is just a switch that you're controlling yourself. As we look here, okay, you've turned D back off, and now it's moving along, and when we get back to the rising edge of the clock, it, the flip-flop looks at Q, looks at D again, and then changes Q. Since D has changed to zero, it's going to change Q to zero. So D is still zero here. This edge comes along, it stays the same. All right. Now you've thrown the switch, or whatever is driving D has changed, and it's gone high. It's going to look here, okay, and. It looks at D, it's 1, it changes Q. Now you see D changes here, but it happens all within a space where a rising edge of the clock. So this isn't seen in Q. And it looks again here at this edge of the clock. D's 1 again, it leaves it there. Okay, and here, again, the clock comes by. It looks at D, it's 0, it changes Q to 0. Because the clock doesn't change in this time period when D changes, Q doesn't change. So this graphic just goes back through and shows you where it looks exactly.